In November 2021, Apple announced their self-service repair program, and then they went suspiciously quiet for a very long time. Until last week when they finally launched said program. Now I've got some pretty strong opinions about this program. We brought Sam along to help balance this argument a little bit. What do you make of all of this? This isn't what Apple thinks you or I need to replace an iPhone screen or battery. This is the like factory level perfection quality assurance uh, system that Apple has for all of its IRPs and the Genius Bars. These tools aren't necessary, they're just to get it to that perfect level of specification that Apple wants. Now we love tools, so we thought we'd take a look. We ordered Apple's $1200 iPhone repair toolkit, which you can rent for $49. It comes in two huge Pelican cases and includes a heated display pocket, aka a hot pocket, custom sized for each phone, which slides into a heated display removal fixture with a timer and a fancy suction cup. And by the way, this ships with what seems to be the power cord from an iMac, which does the job just fine but looks hilarious. A couple of suction cups for holding your iPhone display while you work. Also this battery press with a spring-loaded roller for securing your new battery in place. And a sweet display press with a built-in timer for sealing your phone back up when you're done. There's also screwdrivers, adhesive cutters, and all the other stuff you'd expect. There's a lot to unpack here, so let's get into it. We have 79 pounds worth of equipment across two Pelican cases. We had to put down a $1,200 deposit to get this stuff. If Apple thinks that we need this much equipment to replace an iPhone screen, maybe we need to look at the repairability scores we've assigned to them. What we need is the manuals, and Apple has finally released those for the first time into the public, and you can accomplish all those repairs without all of these tools. You thought the manuals were good? Um, I'm, I felt they were less streamlined than I would have liked. The warnings in particular were a little bit over the top. Yeah, well, you have to remember again that this is this is Apple. It's a huge corporation. They've got a lot of lawyers. They've got deep pockets and people who are looking after them to say, oh, well, you didn't warn me not to do thus and such. Um, but they've got great photos. They've got great il illustrations and instructions. Um, they're basically just repurposing the IRP stuff. So it's the Genius Bar stuff. It's all of the super long checklists they have to do to get things back up to Apple spec. But they are missing the schematics, which I believe are very important. And Apple's excuse so far has been that these repairs are best done by the experts. That's the same excuse they gave us for not releasing the manuals. Right, and that's that's fair. And uh, generally, I do agree with you. Um, but the... They are already agreeing to expand to more devices, so we can hope that maybe someday we'll also get those schematics. Um, I think this is like a lot of inertia that Apple is overcoming in allowing this to happen in the DIY market, um, but they've slowly expanded from just inside the Apple stores to the uh, third-party providers and IRP and now to DIY. So I think we're slowly like making them more confident that yes, the average person can actually do these repairs. Let's talk spare parts. The uh, parts that Apple are currently selling, they, they seem to be a little bit overpriced. Uh, you can get an iPhone 12 Pro Max screen for about $329. With the trade-in, I believe it comes to about $278. Now, if you were to rent these tools, that adds another $49. You're looking at a saving of maybe $1.65. Apple is not discounting the labor costs. They are not providing any financial incentive to carry out your own repairs. Right, so this is... Uh, what Apple thinks is like a very niche market. It's people who are um, obsessive enough about detail that they would get all of these tools to get their phones back to Apple spec, but they're also obsessive maybe about privacy or they just really want to do it themselves. Um, I don't think they think it's a very big market. I think the bigger market is without the tools, um, but having that parts pairing and that official Apple part uh, is going to be very important. I was surprised that this is basically wholesale pricing as well, but I guess this is Apple trying to level the playing field that everyone gets the same prices and everyone gets access to parts pairing. All right, so the cost is what it is. Let's talk about privacy for a second. Our friend Jessa did this whole process. She got right to the end, and then Apple gave her all these super invasive requirements to scan her call logs, scan her phone, and whatnot. What is this about for a company so obsessed with privacy? This seems extremely invasive. I'm actually super glad you brought this up because I think this is a mistake or at least an oversight that this is the full suite of diagnostic tools that the Genius Bar is going to look at 
anything that goes wrong with your phone. And this is not relevant at all to battery swaps. So that part of the software is never going to be used for verifying your battery, verifying your screen, but it exists out there. So Apple is doing like the right thing by warning you about it, but they are not doing the best thing, which would be like sectioning off that part of the diagnostic software and just putting the parts pairing uh, scanning in there, uh, which is the only relevant part for this kind of repair. It looks like they're trying to sabotage their own program. This, this could be true, but there is, there's a lot of inertia behind Apple and there's a lot going on, but uh, I think they see right to repair on the horizon and they're just kind of trying to like hustle as much as they can, which means just repurposing what they've got around the office for like, okay, well, this was good enough for IRP. We're going to put it out there and we're going to kind of check that box as far as now we can do self-service repair. But like, it's the thought that counts. They put this out here. It's available and it'll get better. You know, I think it'll, I think it'll get better. I think we've had a good chance to look at Apple's solution. I don't think their solution... Here, higher, can you grab this? Thank you. Makes any sense uh, in response to our solution, which is affordable, accessible, and portable. This is all we need to replace the iPhone 12 Pro Max screen. Consumers want this. We know who we're writing to. Apple is writing to the Genius Bar and the people that they've been training forever and the factory level of perfection. This is a great example. We ordered all these, uh, we ordered our kit to replace a 12 Pro Max screen and battery. Uh, now, teething problems, I don't think there was anything malicious behind this, but the tools have arrived. They arrived a couple of days ago. The parts have not. Now imagine someone else in our situation they run out to get one of iFixit screens, except they can't use it because the serial number is not the serial number they declared when they ordered the kit and they can't pair it with their phone. Some of the Apple concerns are um, IP related, which is a standard thing for, you know, car companies and John Deere. They don't want you to touch any of that. Um, and some of it is security related where you're talking about like face ID and touch ID and those kinds of things where like maybe data is a question here. Uh, but largely you're right that Apple is basically holding hostage repair with this like single part of parts pairing. Well, it's, it's unacceptable for people like me. Uh, we want to make the decision for ourselves. This is this is very fair. And this is where right to repair comes in. Right to repair will ideally uh, require this kind of thing to be open and available. Uh, just like for cars, uh, diagnostic tools are more available to uh, third party shops. Um, you can put any tires on any car you want. And you know, your oil filter can come from AutoZone and not your dealer. Uh, and that's the kind of freedom that we need for phones and electronics and laptops. There's Good eggs at Apple, they're trying their best, but this is ridiculous. What we need are schematics, we need to fix this parts pairing issue, and we need to get Apple to release their stranglehold on repair. We appreciate that Apple's a industry leader currently in this space, but there's more to be done. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There's more work to be done, and we're looking forward to pushing that progress forward. I look forward to it.